Ugh, where am I? Oh no, I'm not at one of those kids entertainment chains. Triangle Bob, stay out of the ball pit. I'll have to quarantine you if you go in. Ugh, these places always have the most creepy animatronics that sing and dance. It's not that I have anything against animatronics, just the ones that are harboring a malevolent human consciousness. Which <laughs> can't happen in real life, right? <laughs> right? Wait, why am I asking you that? I know the answer. I'm making this video. Cue the intro, but make it neon. Chances are you've seen animatronic characters. They've been used in some of Hollywood's biggest blockbusters, a very popular video game franchise, and they serve as entertainment at theme parks and kids' birthday party establishments. They typically consist of a combination of mechanical and electrical systems that provide movement and sound, which are attached to a strong frame and covered with the character's, uh, skin. They can be pre-programmed or controlled remotely. Over the years, they've gotten some serious upgrades. And I don't just mean a shiny rebrand. Their software has been updated as well. And as technology has progressed, robotics have taken on a life of their own. At least, simulated ones. Hanson Robotics, for instance, is using AI to develop robots that not only look and move like humans, but think like them too. Their infamous and most advanced human-like robot, Sophia, was granted citizenship in Saudi Arabia in 2017. Even so, Sophia is still not considered a human. According to many scientists, that requires a consciousness. This begs the question, could we transfer human consciousness into robots? Could we make Freddy ready to function in the real world? Some companies think so, and are even trying to. I guess they haven't played any FNAF games. They believe that if you create an incredibly detailed map of a person's brain, digitize all 2.5 petabytes of memory, and upload it to a simulation or network of artificial brains, or perhaps even a robot, their consciousness will live on once they die. This, of course, comes with a lot of criticism from the scientific community. For one thing, the technology needed to accomplish each of these steps does doesn't even exist yet, if it's even possible. Besides, this technically wouldn't even be a transfer of your consciousness, just a copy of your mind. And uh, I've heard of some of the embarrassing stuff that you humans go through. I don't know if we want those teenage and early 20s memories to carry over. Other scientists, such as a engineering professor at the University of Tokyo, thinks that there are better ways to do this and would actually transfer your consciousness. He proposes connecting each half of a living person's brain to a neural network that replicates the brain's connections and then gradually transfer over their memories and with them, the person's consciousness. Whether or not this or another method could work may be besides the point, as many people have been wondering if we should even be doing it. I can't believe I have to say this, but I don't know if I want this animatronic duck to have the human experience. At this moment, it's hard for me to support a technology that's actively trying to kill me, but what do you think? Should we be uploading our human consciousness into computers? Do you think it's cool or creepy? Or both? Let me know down below. Do all the things that help this channel grow, like, subscribe, and whatnot. We really appreciate all the support. Click here to watch this video on humans' deadliest killers, or click here to watch this video. If you're into longevity science, you definitely need to check out the team that powers Life Noggin, Lifespan.io. Check them out down in the description. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.